in the opaque Coca-Cola cup, famous Paula Abdul there. Good morning. I appreciate you being here each morning. It's time to check in on your money and see what Wall Street's doing to you. It's actually better news this morning than it was yesterday. In the business, we call that a tease. On the phone is Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring, who's feeling a little bit better about this morning, too. Philip, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing okay, Dave, other than, you know, sometimes our information doesn't quite come in the way we want it to come in. So um, I, I'm shooting a little blind on earnings. I, I've got some rough numbers, but uh, lacking a little detail this morning. Well, we'll give them what we got, and we'll go with that in the process. Set the table for yesterday. We were kind of forewarning you. Yesterday was going to be a poopy day and ended up being that way. Dow was down 422 points. That's over a full percent. And when you're talking about Dow levels in the 38, 39 range, that's kind of scary. Standard & Poor's was down by 49. NASDAQ was down by 136 yesterday. Everybody was bumping their nose in a full percent off of a one-tenth of one percent change from what they expected on the consumer price index inflation measure. And I mention that because when we get to the current data today, uh, it's a one-tenth of a percent difference from what was expected, too, except it's the good side, and that's going to make all the difference. Uh, Yesterday afternoon, they released the minutes of last month's uh, Federal Reserve open market committee meeting, and I noted before we went on the air, Philip, they uh, said, quote, and unquote, general agreement that it would be appropriate to lower rates at some point this year with an implication later on this year. I'm starting to get the feeling the big heads of the Fed are starting to listen to dweebs like us. What do you think? You know, I'm, I'm maybe so. Maybe we're, we're fortunate now that we're getting into that, uh, you know, uh, I, I doubt it, but it'd be nice to think that. Now, my ego will take anything that I can get to self-validate. I mean, we do stream worldwide up there. Let's take advantage of the fact. <laughs> get up to the, we get up to this morning, and I mentioned a one-tenth of one percent miss. Today, we get the wholesale inflation rate producer price index. Last, yesterday, a one-tenth of a percent difference from what economists expected really ruined our day. Today, they were expecting a three-tenths of a percent increase in the producer price index last month. And what do we get? A two-tenths of a percent increase. And you'd think it's party time because we were a tenth of a percent better. Yeah, you would think. And it, and it was for just a little while, Dave. But uh, let me just give you a little forewarning that uh, uh, what uh, went from down to up has gone back to the downside. So it's uh, been a roller coaster ride this morning already in the last uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm about 10 minutes behind you, and my, my futures figure just showed the big jump up, so I was actually a little bit optimistic there for a couple of minutes. Uh, the other data dump that came out was the uh, government's uh, weekly figure as to how, how many first-time jobless claims happens. One of the things the Federal Reserve's watching is, are we finally cooling off the job market? Uh, the answer to that is, yep, they expected 221,000 first-time claims for unemployment benefit. Uh, we got 211. I'm still looking at those numbers when they're that abnormally low, Philip, and saying, for heaven's sake, this is, uh, you know, that, that statistical wobble, so we're so far below what a normally functioning economy would be, as hot as the job market is, going from two, going 221 to 211, it's still in the range of abnormally low, and I'll let it sit at that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and until we get that, I think, back to the normal level, it's going to be hard to bring inflation down because just the wage inflation continues to be an issue. Absolutely. I mean, the simple fact of the matter is you need an employee. You're computing with probably five other businesses trying to hire that employee as well. And well, I mean, it's good news if you're the employee because you're an in-demand commodity, and that means your your wages go up because you can claim more money. But at the same time, it ends up making wage prices up, and that doesn't help inflation one tiny little bit, does it? No, it really doesn't. Until we get that fixed, it's going to be an issue. Absolutely. I've got one piece in uh, saying learning the lessons of the 70s. Uh, talking about inflation control dating back to the Volcker days and basically was talking about don't wait too long and don't uh, release the hold on the interest rates too terribly long. The thing that really stuck out of my mind was just to give everybody a picture while we're whining about, you know, five and a half percent federal funds rate. Remember how high Volcker had it up? 
up to uh, 20 percent back in the early 70s as we bumped the interest rates up a little bit. So things could be a ton worse than they are. So that's that's for sure, Dave. I mean, just I'm looking at the 30 year now um, Treasury and it's it's gone up quite a bit just this week. Um, we're up to 4.63 percent right now in the 30 year Treasury. Yeah, I've noticed that the uh, the tenure that everybody watches most careful. I mean, it's 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 getting up there, and that means that uh, <laughs> it means investors are expecting a little longer haul on inflation and a little uh, longer run on higher interest rates than we were expecting a little bit earlier, right? Yeah, that, that's definitely what it's looking like right now. Absolutely, we uh, do have some reports that are precursing of the real flood of reports that come out yet yeah, tomorrow when the big banks start reporting when earnings season formally begins. But one of the household names that you and I watch and talk about a lot is CarMax. Yeah, exactly. And CarMax did report. And like I said earlier, we, we don't have much in detail because uh, the, the tip sheet guy rider must have slept in this morning or something. But, uh, but the, but, CarMax did report not as good as expected. They were expected to earn about 45 cents a share. They only earned 32 cents a share. And uh, and that's got them on the downward slide today, down 8.8% this morning. And that's followed up by a 4.9% close yesterday. So that's uh, over 12%, 13, 14% in the last uh, 24 hours. Holy crud, that it kind of underscores the notion it's a tough room to play on earnings season this week. It's going to make a few bank CEOs a little nervous tomorrow, I'd wager. That is. The other one I have, and the only other one I have, is Constellation Brands. They're the liquor company. And mm. uh, they they beat by about $0.16 cents a share, came in at $2.26 $2. a share. And uh, and they are trading up a little over 1% this morning. I did see a little bit about them is their uh, beers, uh, beer continue to be uh, increasing in sales volume. However, wine and liquor was down from, uh, from year over year in the previous quarter. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, given the way the economy is going, I'd be drinking. Uh, never mind. <clears throat> Reset. Resetting the table for the morning. A bloodbath might be overstating yesterday, but a profoundly unpleasant day would be a good description on the major indexes after we got an unpleasant surprise in consumer inflation. 45 minutes before we throw some real money around this morning. Philip, what are we looking at today? Hey, it has bounced back up to slightly green pretty much across the board. We got the Dow up $20, not even a tenth of a percent. The S&P 500 is up a tenth. And the NASDAQ 100 is up about a third of a percent. So uh, we've got at least a tinge of green to open it this morning, it looks like. On the other side of the coin, silver made a huge jump uh, uh, overnight and actually yesterday. It's up back over $28 to $28.23 an ounce. Gold's up a half a percent. Crude oil down six tenths to $85.68 a barrel. Go down, go down, go down, crude. <laughs> I'm pulling out Hope Springs Eternal. Uh, overseas markets, the Asian Rim generally looked at our markets yesterday and responded kind of the way they habitually do. Uh, everybody but China was off yesterday follow, following what we did to ourselves yesterday. The mainland Chinese markets, because they view themselves as kind of a zero-sum competitor of ours, they were up fractionally at the close at 6 a.m. this morning. Overall, though, the Asian Rim was off. Europe, on the other hand, they're friends of ours, so consequently they looked at us and said, uh-oh. And now with the uh, futures turning back around again, it looks like everything's going to be a little bit on the negative side. Uh, the index in Europe is a little bit to about nine one hundredths of a percent to the red side so far this morning. That's about halfway through their trading day. Retirement is imminent for some of us. It's a future plan for others of us, and the plan it takes to make retirement happen kind of varies depending upon your age and income and current status. How do I get a hold of you to customize a retirement plan for me? Then they give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule a core retirement analysis. And then join us this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. at noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And hopefully here tomorrow morning with some good news for a change. I hope to see you then, Philip. Thank you much. Right, Talk to you then. Be well. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler.
Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a great day and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Take care now.